and just comparing video to this, this is hands-on, it's tactile, so that like, the students are holding it in their hands, so it like holds them accountable to what they're seeing and what they're doing. As a video, you know, they can easily look away or, you know, they can get distracted, but this is another perk for me as a teacher, is when I put this in front of my student, I it's holding them accountable, like in order to get the material, in order to look at that cell, um, in order to look at those plates, they have to, you know, actually look at it and move it around and interact with what's on there. This past unit, my scores actually went up 15% than last year and I used this for space and I was able to, you know, show them a solar system in the palm of their hand, inner planets compared to outer planets, the size of the planets. Um, I mean, I'm not saying it's all merge. I'd like to say it's some on me too, but it's just amazing what it's able you know, what it's able to give these students um, that we're able to let them um, see these different things. I'm actually a science coach, so I see over eight or 900 students. I support about 30 teachers. So I love it because no matter what grade levels come in into my lab, I know I'll have something that they can do. You can use it with higher critical learning activities or even just simple ones that are just let's name this part of the body let's just label this you can take it into so many different directions as a teacher for me what i think about is differentiating and the different type of learners that we have in the classroom so whether you're an auditory learner whether you're a tactile kinesthetic learner whether you need sound whether you need visual absolutely it's all included here what i love about this and differentiates this from other platforms that are just simply handheld where the student is holding an iPad or having to hold their phone is the fact that it's a phone, it's a device, and it's not something that is, um, you know, I guess you can say easy, easier to grab and easier to manipulate. Today when we were doing the brain, um, and I've seen the students do it when we do the structures with the heart and things like that as well. The, the students are very engaged. You, you suddenly, you hear lots of noise in the class because they're all discussing what they've got in front of them. Today, they took the brain model and they actually put it up to their head and they were moving it about and the other person with their phone in front of them or the tablet in front of them was looking through and was getting them to position where the brain was. And I've seen them do the same thing when they've had the heart object, they take the merge cube and they put it into their body and the person who's looking through the app says to them, no, no, it would be up a bit, it would be over a bit, it would be down. So they got, they very much get an understanding of where in the body um, these objects are. To use it, you pick it up and you point a device at it and merge does the magic. You don't have to do anything at all. So it's really, it's just a point and scan technology. So when you hear the word augmented reality or, or virtual reality, these aren't big scary things. It's point and scan. Everybody can do it. I work in elementary schools and we've got littles. I'm talking to four and five year olds who are using this technology with very little instruction. So when you hear these big scary words, they're not so big and scary. You just point, scan, and magical things appear <laughs> in three dimensions. So you've got 3D objects that kids can then hold in their hands, spin around, wonder at, marvel at, and learn from. And that's what we want, right? We want them being curious learners. So this mystical object isn't so mystical. Let's demystify it and let's just use it to help kids learn in an easy, fun, and engaging way.